Hi everyone, uh, welcome to the Multigo 3.1 video. Been pushing hard for this release. Uh, Dave's working hard, everyone kind of just really pushing hard. Um, so as such, it's not really a user guide. So this is kind of going to be the, the best that, uh, that you're going to get. I'll try to keep the faffing to a minimum. Um, and uh, my lovely assistant drill office is going to show me what I need to show you. Okay, so I'm going to fire up the tool. Uh, you'll see there's a nice new splash screen. Uh, it's loading up here. And you'll see we're just going to go over some of the things that we've uh, made a little bit easier within the tool. So based on what people have told us and things that we've, you know, we've heard around. So the first thing is once it starts up, you're going to get this nice little wizard. Uh, you click next and it's going to let you discover either from the public server. So that's the one that's available to all commercial users. Um, or it's going to let you discover from your own server. So if you have your own, you just put an IP address and it'll do everything else for you. Click next and that's not going to go get the transforms and entities and everything that you have from the server. Uh, you'll see one of the other things that we've done here while that loads is that we've added the values to the slider uh, under the investigate tab. So this is the number of results is now set uh, for the notches at so 12, 50, 255 and 10,000. Um, so just waiting for this to finish and that's getting all the transforms from the various seeds and now it's updating them. It'll give us a nice little thing that says, okay, we've got 139 new transforms and 76 entities. I'm going to say, okay, well, I want to open an example graph just to play around with it. Um, example graph is just loading. Here's the start page. You'll see that this has got the links to our various social networks and Twitter and blog posts. So if there's anything important, we'll generally put it there. Uh, it's quite nice. Then, uh, just wait, hang on, before I have to get on to the next note. One of, the things, one of the other things that we found is that people often want to select a type of entity. Uh, from a graph. So I've got a graph like this and say I want to select uh, all the domains or something like that. What I can do is under the investigate tab I can select by type. So I can say well, in this case let's say I want all the IP addresses and now I've selected all of them and I can see them in the detail view and work with them there. So it's a nice way to quickly do and select your type. Okay uh, we're on to the next one. No faffing, getting on with it. Okay so the next thing we look at is we've added notes. So I'm just going to uh, drag a domain in here and you'll see that if you look at the domain, there's a little note icon. So if I double click on that, you'll see that I can add a note. So let's say uh, this is a sample note and second line. So I can add that and now I've got a, a note attached to it. Um, and if I click under manage, I can turn notes on or off uh, depending on what I want to see. And also when you double click on an entity, you'll see that there's kind of a new look to it, but I can quickly change the notes. I can add third line um, and hello Matiga world. Okay, so I can change the notes and there's attachments and things that we'll get to now. Um, so if I change that, and then you'll see it's updated. Um, with regard to attachments, you can now attach files and images and things to your entities. So I'm gonna go to my sample pictures here. Now like penguins, so I'm gonna say, well, I think domains actually should look like penguins. So I'm just gonna drag it onto there and you'll see that it's now attached the file. Um, and I wanna double click on it and I go into attachments. You'll see that it's there and where it's from. Uh, if I click on the attach tab, I can do it uh, from a file, so instead of dragging and dropping it, I can select it, uh, or I can do it from a URL. So let's say I wanted to attach uh, an image here. I'm going to say copy image location. I'm going to say, okay, copy it from this URL. And I say, okay, and now it's going to pull that down from the net, um, and it's going to store it within the entity. So if I give the graph to someone else, they've got that. Um, and additionally, it's also going to show you the source. So here you can see that's where I got it from. So now you'll be able to say, okay, well, I've got this graph. Let me go see where the image was from originally. So it's nice for things that update and, and so on. Um, also under the summary tab, I can now pick what I want the entity to look like. So I like domains to be penguins. So I click on penguins and now it's updated. And when I look at my graph, it's, uh, it's over there. So that's quite nice. Um, then we've got bookmarking. So I'll take a whole bunch of things. So if I was doing an investigation, I thought, you know what? These things are all important, these two here. So I'm going to change the bookmarking. I'm just going to click on the star and I'm going to make it this red color. Um, and of course, if I select the entity itself, I can change the bookmark here. Um, so there's a couple of ways to do that. And now when I give it to someone, they'll, I can say something like, okay, check out the red things because they're important or I don't know what to do with them, something like that. And also under the investigate tab, you can also say, okay, I want to select the bookmarked icon. So I'm going to say all the red ones and I'll have them in the detail view and I can work with them there. Uh, then the last thing on this, uh, helpful guide is that I'm going to say uh, we have the ability to change type. Okay, so if I add something like a DNS name and I call it mail.pitova.com and I actually say, you know what, that's actually an MX record, that's on the DNS name um, and I want the MX record transforms available because obviously they're dependent on the type. I can click on change type and I can change this say from a DNS name and I'm going to make this an MX record. 
Okay, so I click OK, and now it's an MX record and I have the MX record types. Okay, we are moving on to the next one. Okay, so I'm gonna start. Um, some of the things that we've changed is that you can copy and paste things a little bit easier. So for example, I take something like this, there's a URL, I'm just gonna copy it. Uh, MLTGO, I'm gonna use just Control V or I can use the paste button. Uh, you'll see here that it's a URL, and if I click on it, see under properties, everything's already populated. So it's really nice to work with. Um, and you can also do this with images. So let's say I wanted this image in my graph because I want to do X of information on it or something. I'm going to say copy image location, I paste it into my graph, and here you'll see it's uh, taken the name, hang on, wait, and uh, it's going to download that image. Sorry, we, we're in a bit of a rush here. Okay, so the next thing we're going to look at is we're going to merge entities. Um, this is quite a nice feature if you've got a whole bunch of things that you, you want on your graph but you're not really that interested in, say. Uh, so I'm going to do MX records for Pitova.com. You see there's three of them here. Um, so you can merge entities if they are the same type. So these are all MX records and I actually want to know that they're at Google but maybe I don't want to keep my investigation going on. So I'm going to say merge and it's going to say okay which one do you want as the primary so what's going to be displayed in this merged entity and then I can also say okay I want to merge the links. So I want just one link, or otherwise I want to show how many things we're linking in. So I'm just going to keep it as one. I click OK, and now I've got just this one entity, which is really nice here. Yeah? Um, and then I can just work with that, you know, if I have to. Um, so I'm going to go back to my example graph quickly. I'm going to have a bit of fun with links now. So some of the things is that people often ask, you know, how do you select links if I want to change something? Uh, there's a couple of ways. So the first way is you just hold down Control and just drag a box around a link uh, or click on it. And you'll see you've got the link there, and then you can change the properties in the property view. So I can change it to a different color, a uh, different style, and we'll, we'll look at that now. Uh, then other things you can do is you can click on an entity, and under the Investigate tab, you can say I want to select links by either incoming, so links that are going into it, outgoing, where it's going to another entity, or both. So for example, say I wanted just the one going to that AS number, I can say outgoing links, and I've got that link, and I can change it to, you know, I can change it, let's say I want to make it blue, I'll leave it as solid. So now I've got a solid blue line there. Um, then additionally, you can click on an entity and you can use Control L, which will select all incoming and outgoing links. So let's take this one, say Control L. Now I've got all these links and I can change them. Here I'm gonna make these say red because you know they're dangerous links or something. Um, and I want someone to look at it. So now I've got these red links that are here. Um, okay, um, next, next one here. Oh, we're looking at layout. So this is quite a big thing and a lot of things have changed uh, within layout. First thing you're going to see is that there's bubble view now. So this is your standard uh, view that we had before, it's just obviously got a new name. Uh, it used to be called edge weighted view. And here you'll see that you now have the option to switch it between use incoming links or outgoing links. So now I can weight them uh, based on the size of them, based on how many things either link to them or how many things um, are linking from them. So I can say, okay, well here's for incoming links. So the things that are bigger have the most things pointing towards them. However, if I switch it around, now the things that have got the most things coming out of them are bigger. So it's a nice way to be able to look at that. And of course I can use both. So now I can you know, see, okay, what's got the most of both worlds. Um, then additionally, we've got um, this, uh, a view called interactive organic, which is really nice. So often you would have seen when you're running transforms, the whole graph is relaying out. So it's sorting out how everything sits together. But now you have this interactive organic mode. I can take something like, uh, let me take, say something like this. I'm just gonna actually remove this. Now I'm going to say, okay, I've got this entity here and I want to just get an IP address for it. And now what's going to happen is the IP address is going to come out and it's only going to lay out the parts of the graph that it needs to. So you're going to lose, you know, you're going to get a lot of speed from that and it's a really nice feature. Um, then you're going to have, going to look at a little bit of locking. So I'm going to take perturva.com again. I've been told to speed this up, less faffing. Um, I've got a whole bunch of MX records here. What I can do is I can say, okay, well, I want to pin these to the graph somewhere. Right. You'll see there's actually a whole bunch of stuff under organize for, for graph layout. So I want to take these and I want to align them to the top, right? Uh, then I want to take these and I want them uh, aligned vertically in the center. So now I've got them all in place. And what I can do is I can click on this lock icon and now these are essentially pinned down to the graph. So the same as if you would pin something to a whiteboard, uh, you know, like that. So now I can say, okay, from this, I'm going to take it to an IP address. And you'll see that that is now not going to lay out. IP address is just going to come straight off that. Really nice to use if you want to keep things in place. Um, and I think I, I have to go on to the next one. Oh, lost my note there. Okay, so the last thing that we want to touch on um, is that, well, second last thing, sorry, is that we want to look at importing entities. So obviously case file, sorry, obviously case file has a lot of 
uh, new entities and you might want to have those in Multigo. So what you can do is you can click on manage and you can say import entities, uh, select your graph, we'll either give it to you as an MTGX or an MTZ, it'll be available on our blog or our website. Um, then you can click next and you'll see you can import entities here, next, next, next and you can, you can go through that. Okay, uh, on, the, on the last one now. Um, and then of course with all these new features we still have the same thing so we still have all the transforms available to you um, you know there's some there's some nice things like clear refresh images a whole lot of new features and we actually really hope that you'll uh, you'll enjoy this this release um, and of course we're always here for love and caring support cheers <laughs>